Hello, hello, testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay, excellent. It looks like we have everything working. Welcome, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to our stream. Can somebody in the chat please hop in and let me know that they can hear me okay and that everything's working? We had a few technical difficulties this morning, so I just want to make sure that stuff is coming through. I can see Rai Rai, the ticket guy, showing in there. So thank you for hopping in the chat, Ryan, and letting you know. Hey, hey, the rest of the crew is showing up too. Hey, hey, Josh, good to see you. Hello, folks, and welcome to another episode of Chocolatey Explained, which is our live Twitch stream series. We've uh, we've missed you for a little bit. Uh, we haven't been showing up uh, as often as we did. We were, unfortunately, in the uh, head office in Topeka last month actually having some meetings and, and getting together. So that was really great. Uh, practicing all appropriate COVID protocols, of course. But one of the reasons that we were away last month is um, our sales team and our customer success teams were getting together and we were here to meet Tyler. So without further ado, I'm going to click forward in the slides and we're going to meet Tyler. So Tyler, unmute yourself, please, and show yourself on the stream. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, my name is hey. Tyler. I'm an account manager here at uh, Chocolatey. Just joined not too long ago. Uh, yeah. And um, I uh, give it back. I'll give a little background on myself. So mm -hmm. please do. You know, I live in San Diego. Um, in my free time outside of work, you know, I like to make music, uh, play video games, mountain bike, ski. Um, but for now, you know, I'm all about Chocolatey software and Adil and everyone else is helping me out and teaching me the ropes. And it's been great so far. Rock on. We're glad to have you on board, Tyler. So yeah. So Tyler joins us um, from San Diego. So he's a fellow West Coaster, which is pretty cool. Now, Tyler, I'm curious. You did mention um, you, you, you make music, you play music. Yeah, I do. Yes. Uh, I am a guitar player and piano player and vocalist and I mess around with Ableton when I can. Um, you know, nice. it's, it's really helpful to wind down, and it's kind of what I like to do when, like, after work. You know, obviously. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's super cool. Are you in a band? Do you do you play in any bands at all? I anybody, I was I was in a band, um, mm -hmm. but due to my time constraints, I was let go. But that was a. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, that was actually a good choice because it was a little, it was a little intense. It was more of a rock band, um, which isn't exactly my vibe, but it was fun while I was doing it. Very cool. Very cool. So, you know, any, any, any bands in the San Diego area, if you want to reach out, is that, is that, is that what we're saying? Yeah. Yeah. You're open taking uh, auditions. Yeah. I'm definitely, I'm definitely open for it. You know, uh, we'll see, we'll see what opens up in the, in the future. You know, there's a pretty, there's a lot of good bands that have come from San Diego, but uh, it's been a while since since a, a really popular one has popped out. So maybe it's my time, you know. Rock on. So, yeah, your time to <laughs> shine. Well, you know, um, uh, we'll keep you busy in your day job anyway. Um, over here at Chocolatey, we're very happy to have you here. And I think I think a part of the motivation behind some of the the changes that we've made or or we've introduced that we're going to talk to you folks about today um, is is you know sort of like reinventing or remodeling our sales process a little bit, right? And so Tyler's here and joined me on stream kind of to talk about some of this stuff because I know previously we've had feedback from a lot of our customers or prospective customers and in the process that we had in place uh, in order to look at Chocolatey for business and a lot of the features there, right? So so I think a, a lot of this is going to be um, you know sales focused and I'm glad that we're welcoming Tyler onto the stream and, 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 and sort of having him be a part of this discussion because I think it's important to be fully transparent, right? And, and talk about some of the stuff, the challenges we've come through and some of the stuff that we've grown out of at this point, right? Um, so Tyler, before we move on into sales stuff, I do want to say um, welcome on board. We're very happy to have you here. I know you come with a little bit of a technical background and, and for those folks in the chat and hanging out, uh, you know, Tyler is new to PowerShell, but he's very eager to learn. Um, uh, he's done some Python work before, but we won't hold that against him, will we? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for now. Yes. For I now. would definitely <laughs> like to learn more about PowerShell. And it will be it will be a slow learning process, but I've gotten a mm -hmm. good background so far. 
And you've already picked up a lot about chocolatey. So that's the important thing. It's a gateway drug, really, right? It gets you into uh, PowerShell, all those other things. Um, okay, so like, let's talk a little bit about the, the sales process now, because I think that that's what's changed a little bit. And that's what we want to, we want to, we're trying, we're doing everything we can to try and make you successful, right? As the customer. Um, and, and a lot of that is, is trying to put you in, um, you know, in some cases, like, you know, gently nudge you into the pit of success, if you will. So, so a part of that is, is also the fact that generally um, a lot of folks were finding that sometimes when, when uh, they reached out to sales, um, there was a little bit of a delay in that process and a little bit of delay in getting you onboarded and, and getting you a trial in your hands. So, so here's the new process as it is now, it's going to evolve a little bit more to make this even easier for you over time. But we do want to touch on a couple of these points here. So the first thing that we're going to mention is the intro calls. So we are beginning to have 25 minute intro calls. They may go down to 20 minutes or 15 minutes, depending on time. And so that's where Tyler and I will hop on stream. Well, I'm sorry, we'll hop on Zoom with you and uh, walk through some of um, your use case. So kind of what we're trying to do is just intro calls. We're, we're actually just trying to understand your use case, what you'd like to do with chocolatey, what type of problems that you're having in your environment. Uh, and you know how we can help essentially, right? And, and and this is all part of streamlining this process. We used to do full demos, full hour demos with a lot of folks to try and dig into a lot of that stuff. Now that's still available to some organizations if you choose it, but the real the real appetite there is, you know, you, we want you to be able to get your feet wet or your hands dirty, whatever analogy you prefer um, as quickly as possible in the tool. And, and really we found that the best learning opportunity was for chocolatey um, as a product was for you to actually be able to use it. And if you can spin it up in your environment quickly and easily, it's going to go a lot more smoother for you in overall, you know, your overall experience with chocolatey and also in, in your learning of chocolatey as a product. So these intro calls we've started doing. So don't be surprised if Tyler reaches out and, and, and sends that to you if you reach out to sales. Um, the other piece of that is, we, you know, we keep this all, again, I've mentioned some of these points already. We keep it very conversational. We're more trying to understand your use case uh, and, and how chocolatey can help you in these situations. So um, let's go over the trial process a little bit because the trial process has also changed, right? So, so essentially what we were finding was we had a couple of different ways that you could try our product. Of course, you still have all these ways available to you, these means, but the, the real uh, challenge that we have is we want to make you successful as quickly as possible. And so in order to do that, we sort of make some choices for you. And the important thing is we make these choices in order to help you um, be better prepared for um, being successful with the trial. And, and so you get into this, we had all these options, right? Part of the challenge was we had quick deployment environment, which is a great option um, and, and definitely a great tool that we built. It was sort of like a self-contained appliance image um, that you could trial chocolatey with. Um, but what folks were running into, as we've talked about on stream before, is everybody had such custom bespoke environments. Uh, their VMware controllers were hardware controllers, virtual controllers were all different. So we, we'd often have folks running into challenges when they were spinning up QTE in their own hypervisor of choice. So we've kind of narrowed it down. And so essentially what we had before was a little bit of the paradox of choice. There were too many options and sort of a lot of customers were like, hey, I, I see all this stuff on your docs and on your site. I don't even know which one to pick or where, which way to go in this direction. So let us help you in that process. So we've, we've narrowed this down to two options. We kind of simplified it. Um, so essentially the two ways that you get to be able to trial our product um, is um, one is QDE and Azure. So the Azure marketplace image um, that comes in is going to give you the ability to um, spin up QDE or spin up chocolatey for business, I should say, um, in Azure. And, and that will be uh, sort of a, a self-contained marketplace a template that includes you know, an app gateway, includes your, your public IP, uh, you know, and the routing all through to um, uh, your actual VM in the backend, a Windows Server 2019 VM. And in addition to that, it will include, um, you know, a Azure blob storage for storage of your packages. And also, of course, Azure SQL for your database for central management. So all that stuff gets uh, put into scalable units for you already on the backend. And we find this is a really good experience for folks trying out um, um, Chocolatey for Business in the simplest manner. Um, sort, sort of the easiest approach um, with having a lot of the pieces handled for you and, and also being scalable 
in that manner. Now, essentially, all you really need to do in this um, marketplace image version is, you know, obviously spin it up and say, I, I choose this marketplace image. And in addition to that, you will require an SSL certificate. Uh, now, generally, the SSL certificates that we require in our environments do have to have an exportable private key. That is a requirement, um, and, and uh, they need to be a PFX certificate. And basically, if you have the ability to generate CNAME records in your environment, you can potentially generate this certificate um, uh, if you'd like. So, so an SSL certificate is really the most important piece of the QD and Azure piece. Now, the other approach, of course, is the quick start guide. Now we've talked about quick start guide a few times on stream already, but the big take home message for quick start guide is it's sort of bring your own VM. So what we're doing in that case is we're essentially taking the um, VM of your choice. So in your hypervisor of choice, spin up a Windows Server 2019 or 2022 VM. I highly recommend those newer OSs as the older ones. You can still spin up, but there are some challenges with, with 2016. Um, additional scripts you may have to run or hopes you'll jump through. So definitely, if you can, um, according to the requirements and specs, uh, you know, um, spin up a Windows Server 2019 VM or 2022 VM and, and then configure it on your domain, do all the settings you normally do into your template or, or that you have for your Windows Server VMs. And uh, once you're ready, then start running the Quick Start Guide. The Quick Start Guide essentially consists of six different PowerShell scripts that are run for you. Um, the, sorry, basically that you're copying and pasting from the quick start guide, and it will essentially configure all the pieces of Chocolatey for Business for you. It'll configure your Nexus uh, server, it'll configure your CCM environment, it'll configure Jenkins for the pipeline as well, and uh, obviously give you Chocolatey for Business with some of the packaging tools that are built in, like package builder and internalizer. So it'll help pre-configure some of that for you. It will prompt you for some input like your trial license. Um, but um, of course you can provide that and, and then it'll move forward. The scripts will move forward. They're relatively self-contained and, and pretty simplified, but also they will prompt you for input when you need it. So those two options exist. As a part of that process, what we've done is we've also created a pre-flight checklist. Now I have one over here. I'll just hop over to it. Um, and then I'll show you the actual environments as well. Um, so the pre-flight checklist, Essentially, what we're doing is we're helping you try to be successful here. So a couple of things that we think you need to have ahead of time available to you in order for this to work well is, you know, in the c 4 Azure environment, we'll talk through this. Of course, I have a valid chocolatey trial license. You know, obviously, when you get a trial license with us, uh, Tyler will send you a trial in that manner. Um, you need to have an Azure account with contributor access, of course. Uh, and uh, you need to have the ability to create a CNAME record, of which I mentioned and for your DNS provider for the intended fully qualified domain name of your C4B server. Uh, and down here, this is the SSL certificate requirement. So I, we go through in this checklist um, that, you know, the common name subject of the certificate must resolve to the FQDN of your C4B server. You know, you can go through and check these boxes just to make sure that you're covering your bases as well, because it is a checkable PDF that way. Uh, the SSL certificate, of course, must be in PFX format, and the private key of this SSL certificate must be exportable. Um, so a few more requirements for the Quick Start Guide, of course, because you are spinning this up in your environment, so we do need to make sure you have all these boxes checked. So this will just be helpful in terms of getting you through the requirements, the general, you know, just so you make sure that um, you've, you've met all the, the actual recommended specs for the VM as well. Uh, of course, to have a chocolate, valid chocolatey license again, um, that's important. Uh, the trial license will work. Uh, and you have a set up to a virtual machine. You, you, you have to have a virtual machine in your preferred hypervisor. Now, this is where we go through Windows Server 2019. 2016 is the mainstream end of life in January 2022. So probably not something you want to be spinning up now. Um, the four cores minimum, more the more the better. I mean, I, I've done it in eight cores many times. And I do like that option. So down here, RAM. I'd recommend eight gigs as a bare minimum, uh, 16 if you can, uh, just because Nexus is um, running, um, is basically built, I think, as a, as a Java app that from within the Linux world that was converted over to Windows. So it does, does take a bit of RAM there. So four gigs, it almost always will reserve for itself. So you don't really want to run four gigs on a VM because what will happen is Nexus will not return um, up uh, when it's, Nexus goes through the process of rebooting a few times. Um, the actual service, it will restart um, in, as a part of the setup process. And that service may not come up 
uh, very uh, responsively. And that will be a challenge for you when you're setting up C4B. So eight gigs, just stick with eight gigs or 16 if you can. Uh, and that's a good place to start. So 500 gigs as a bare minimum is an important point because you need at least 500 gigs. Um, we recommend as, as your packages grow. So storage is a part of the solution, of course. Um, your Nexus packages need to be stored on that same server. So, so those chocolatey packages in the NuGet store that you have in Nexus, um, you do need to be able to store them. And the real take home message here, folks, is that that often will be the case when, when you have a lot of packages that come in and a lot of versions for those packages. So let's take, for example, Google Chrome. Let's say you're auto updating Google Chrome with our Jenkins pipeline. Then every time you auto internalize a new version, um, you have another package that's there. So let's say the Google Chrome installer is about 90 megs, which it is if you're doing the 32 and 64 bit versions and you're internalizing those. So um, with Google Chrome updating almost every other day, uh, sometimes in certain parts or certain certain times of the year, um, it definitely updates like almost every week. I've seen it do that. Then, you know, those packages will build up over time. So of course you can deprecate or prune older packages from your environment. What we just say, you should really just start with enough capacity so that you're comfortable. And of course, as these are VMs, you can always grow that capacity over time if you need to. But yeah, 500 gigs is probably a good place to start for that. Uh, and And folks are always like, what is the actual official recommended um, best practice standard for storage? And that's really tough to say, right? Because the challenge is not only will these packages and versions change all the time, but every organization has a different number of packages that they wish to internalize. And all those packages, depending on the vendor, may get updated um, very frequently or not very frequently. So, so really it's tough for us to say. Also, if you're using Package Builder to create your own packages, we have no idea of how large those packages are and how often you're updating them. So, you know, plan accordingly. It's one of those things where, um, you know, unsatisfying answer, but it really depends. 500 gigs is a good place to start though. And the good news is you can always expand on VMs or later if you need to. Now networking, open, outgoing, egress, internet access. There is an offline option that's coming soon. Part of the challenge with the offline option is we as a solution, of course, work in offline environments, air-gapped environments very well. Part of why Chocolaty was created was to help folks, you know, defense contractors, folks who works with DOD and stuff. Um, a, lot of, a lot of those folks are actually working with Chocolaty for Business as their, main, uh, as their main tool for packaging of software because it allows you that internalization functionality so you don't have to reach out to the community repo. You can have an internal repo that your endpoints connect to so that you don't consume packages from directly from the community repository. Now that that works and that is great. However, it, for the purposes of trialing the product, um, there's a lot of hoops you have to jump through just to make sure everything works in a firewall air gander environment. Essentially your pipeline that auto updates packages, your Jenkins pipeline, if you will, that would have to exist in somewhere in a DMZ, essentially. Um, you would need outgoing internet access from the community repo to pull down updates to packages. And this is an important point here because a lot of folks will go through and, and understand that, hey, I, I've, I've given access to the Chocolatey community repository. Every address from chocolatey.org is allowed. So, so why aren't my packages working? Well, uh, why aren't your packages internalizing? Part of the challenge here, right, is that the community repository is a public feed. Obviously, if you whitelist that URL, you're going to be able to get to the community repository. Now, all the packages in the community repository are actually essentially template packages. A lot of the uh, internal package itself, the binaries are not included in the package itself. And that's because of distribution rights, right? So Google Chrome, the binary itself, the MSIs don't belong to us uh, as chocolatey because it is a public feed. We're not allowed to host those legally. So that those are hosted on the Google CDNs or for Adobe Reader, they're hosted on the Adobe servers. So you can't just whitelist chocolate.org and expect it all to work. You really, you really would need to whitelist every single um, URL that is contained in any of the packages that you are internalizing from the community repository. <clears throat> so that can quickly become, excuse me, unsustainable. So that's where we say that piece of your puzzle, if you are look, looking for air gapped environments, will need to be in sort of a DMZ or uh, the pipeline will need to be built in a way so that um, you can pull down those packages from the internet. So that's the internet access piece of this. Um, currently, the trial version 
uh, these are the two approved approaches, the QSG, the Quick Start Guide, and, and Azure uh, QDE. So those two options will currently require internet access. Now, if you want to set up an air-gapped environment or more of a offline environment in that sense, uh, and, and you are a customer with, with a certain amount of requirements and a certain amount of user nodes uh, in production, then we can, once you transact with us, you become a customer with us and you're a chocolatey for business customer, we can do some help and we can do some work with you in helping to set up. And that could be implementation services, um, you know, prof additional professional services that will come at, at a separate cost, or, or that could be something else that we work with you on. Um, but during the trial process, um, this is the part which is full transparency here, right, folks? I think the most important thing to remember is we try and support you in the trial process as well. Um, as we would other customers. Now, in order to support you, we're essentially using support resources of our own for free, right? Um, we are providing you that access to support. So in order for our support team to be able to scale and manage supporting you well, we do require that you trial the product in certain ways. Otherwise, our support resources get used up with a lot of folks in the trial process, which we're essentially not being paid anything for. So, so that's the challenge there is we're trying to make this as easy for you to be able to use in a controlled environment that's easy for us to support as well. So I hope that makes sense. Um, again, um, you know, if you have any questions regarding that process, you can reach out to sales as well. We'll give you the links in the end. Um, we always appreciate feedback. So if planning on joining the server to active directory domain uh, or uh, have done, have all of this done so before you start the quick start setup. So if I'm going to join my server to a domain, if I have other configuration settings and registry keys that are all on my on all my Windows Server VMs, then I'm going to go ahead and do that before I start the quick start guide. So have no proxy, reverse proxy load balancer between the C4B server and the internet. This is an important point. We have spent countless hours. Um, I know Ryan's on the call. He can attest for this um, in the chat. He'll he'll drop his message, but we have spent a lot of time and countless hours helping folks with their proxy or reverse proxy load balancer setup that's in the way of, of Chocolatey for Business Server. Now, for the tr purposes of the trial, that is not a configuration that we support. Now, what does that mean? That means that if you have folks internally who are experts or who have configured your proxy reverse proxy load balancer, if you can get the SSL termination to all work between your um, for your SSL certificate that you're using on your C4B server outside to the internet, if all of that termination works well for you um, and you're able to configure that, then Bob's your uncle. We're not stopping you in that process. But if we do come across a reverse proxy or load balancer and other things in the way of the C4B server in a trial process that unfortunately we're not going to be able to proceed further in a, a troubleshooting that for you. Really, because reverse proxies, load balancers, all of these other appliances, they are so bespoke to every environment. So you would know this better than we would know it. And for us to try and come into your environment and try and learn your setup and try and work around it uh, is not really um, you know, a, a good use of time and resources in that manner. So, so that's where we're respectfully going to have to say, no, we cannot support that. You, you can definitely implement it if you like, as long as your SSL termination works. We don't have a problem with uh, uh, having you run it, but we are not going to be the ones to support that specific setup that you have created in your environment, if that makes sense. Uh, if planning to expose your C4B server to the internet, this is very important. So when you internet enable your VM, this is all those remote deployment scenarios that you talk about. When we say self-service anywhere, you know, in the times of COVID or post-COVID, or I don't even know if that's going to be a thing, but but uh, but but essentially, you we have these environments where everybody's remote working, right? Or the majority of staff are remote working, and and this this got dropped in our laps like everybody else, all of those systems. So that was part of why we spun up QTE and we gave you some options to try and set up self-service anywhere. Now, the idea behind that was that your end users, your endpoints don't need to be behind the same subnet or VPN or VLAN for you to be able to control the, the, the packages that they install. Now, part of that process is that you, of course, need to expose your C4B server to the internet on certain ports. Um, the big ports obviously are 24020 TCP, that's for, uh, that's for uh, Chocolatey Central Management, and HTTPS 443 and 8443 as well. Um, now, these are going to be important for, um, for, for being able to, to use um, Chocolatey for business. 
So it, as long as you're able to expose these ports to the internet, you do have to have a valid SSL certificate for this communication. Um, now, this is important. These are the points for the SSL certificate. And we've talked about this before with the Azure part. The CN, your CN must resolve to the fully qualified domain name of your C4B server. There is the concept of wildcard certificates. Um, for the case of the quick start guide, there is a provision built into it. There is an alternative command you can run specifically for that setup. The SSL certificate must be in PFX format. Um, you, there are ways to convert a, a certificate into PFX format, so you can go through that process as well. <clears throat> Generally, it's, it's pretty straightforward to do, but that is the format that the QSG will accept. And the last point, of course, the private key for the SSL certificate must be exportable. Why do we say that? Because Nexus uh, uses a Java key store for its certificates, not the Windows certificate store. So it will require the export of, the, of a private key in that, in that scenario as well. Okay, so uh, additionally, we say have you have installed all pending Windows updates and have rebooted if required. This is important because, of course, um, there are certain KBs or security patches that that come in that can affect the setup of certain Windows features like IIS that are actually needed to run this process for for central management. Central management uses IIS um, um, and ASP.NET. I believe ASP.NET Zero in the back end um, and, uh, and SQL Server for its uh, data storage, but that's SQL Express generally that we install in this format. You can set a separate SQL Server, but again, that's not really in the purview of a trial process. That's more, you know, you're chocolate for business customer, you're helping, um, you know, you're setting up a distributed environment and stuff like that. In those cases, reach out to us and we can help you. Uh, you have access to a local account, of course, that's local administrator. So, so, then account this local with local administrator level access is the most important piece here. Um, a lot of the chocolatey tasks run under this account, of course, because you're opening up a PowerShell admin window in this as this user. Now, specifically for that, a good good point to remember is if you are configuring a lot of this stuff as one uh, uh, certain account that has local admin privileges on a server then you want to use that same account every time you're logging in to configure it going forward. Part of this is because of the SQL Server configuration in the back end. So when you configure SQL Server, it's, it uses its inbuilt authentication mechanism um, to run the actual SQL Server piece. So it's a lot easier in terms of permissioning. There are ways to get around that with permissioning, but that would generally be one of those things where you have to file a ticket to support to help for them to help you out. But it's essentially that account will already have the permissions if it's the account that set up SQL Server Express on your endpoint or sorry, on your C4B server. So it's best to just use the same account that has that local admin privilege all the way through and for future upgrades that you're doing to C4B server. Uh, and of course, the last two points are self-explanatory, but you plan to run all the commands in Windows PowerShell 5.1, uh, Core 6.7, generally those versions will work um, for certain commands, but but they're gonna add an additional ripple. Essentially, we, um, we well, uh, the, the easiest answer is, I like to say that um, everything has been tested using Windows PowerShell 5.1 because it's built into the box and it's available to you already. So that's what we would recommend and that's what we can officially endorse as tested um, and, and functioning for the, the chocolatey stuff to work the, for c 4 b server setup anyway. That's what's been tested. You can definitely probably do it in other ways, but, but that's sort of um, you know the only thing that we can officially endorse there. And the last point here, plan to run all your commands in Windows PowerShell Administrator console, not ISC. So an actual Windows PowerShell console, not, not the ISC. So that's specifically because certain parts of the uh, QSG setup tasks require for the Quick Start Guide to prompt you for input, and those pop-ups will just not work in ISC. We've had folks try and run ISC before uh, and, and uh, fall down pretty quickly in the setup process. So Ryan, actually, on, who's on the call, is also working to, um, Ryan's working to build some checks into the Quick Start Guide that will automatically check and see if your host processes an ISE. And if it is, then it will actually um, give you a warning and stop the, the setup process for you. So until that check is automatically built in for you, it is in the, check, uh, uh, the checklist here just for you to double check and, and make sure that you're going through that process. So 
yeah, this is a lot of little points, folks, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure you have all your boxes checked and you understand all the things you need in order to be successful um, with a chocolatey fruit business trial in your environment. Um, so assuming you've got all this stuff in place, um, then you're going to have a really good time being able to use the product. Um, it, that's our hope anyway. So a couple of things I will touch on quickly. Of course, the quick start guide itself here um, is is available. So if you go to, uh, if you go to, and if I slide over here, we can hop into the links. If you, I'll just click through this. So we have it all available to us. So the important thing is, um, so the Azure marketplace image of course is at ch0.co slash Azure QDE. So if I slide over here, I've already opened that up here and you can see the quick deployment environment. The C4B Azure environment is here. You can simply click on the get it now and, and sign into marketplace and then start filling up your stuff there, filling out all your details there in order to get it. Uh, and, and it's pretty straightforward to do and it will ask you for the SSL certificate piece a little bit and your domain name, your FQDN for your server as well, of course. Um, and then of course we have the quick start guide. So if you go to ch0.co slash QSG, it'll take you to this new version of the quick start guide. Uh, now we have tried to improve this in, in lar large ways and we also have a quick start guides repo that's attached to the back end of this as well. And the nice thing about that is it will pre-configure a lot of these things for you. And also it's it's in, up on GitHub and it's open source. So you can go and take a look at it yourself. There's nothing, um, you know, um, no smoke and mirrors here. You can actually take a look at the code and you can vet the code because before you run any PowerShell scripts off the internet, you know, they always, we always say, you know, go and inspect the code and make sure that you're okay with it and your security team's okay with it. So I'll just touch on this here. So of course it contains the packaging tools. So the C4B license components uh, of package builder, internalizer, and all the other features that you get there. Um, it contains a Nexus repository as well, Chocolatey central management, uh, the uh, our web dashboard backed by SQL Server, MS SQL Server Express. Uh, in addition to that, it contains a Jenkins pipeline. The Jenkins pipeline will allow you to auto internalize packages on a schedule so that you can bring down packages from the community repository, essentially give the task. It's, they're just PowerShell scripts uh, that this Jenkins is a task runner for. So you give it a parameter uh, called P list, P underscore list, I believe, which is a packet, your list of packages. And you just give it that comma separated list of packages that you want from the community repository. It will go, the task will go and check the community repository for a newer version of those packages. If a newer version of those packages exist on the community repository as compared to what's in your internal repository, then Jenkins process will internalize the packages for you, including dependent packages and push them into your internal repo. So it's an auto internalization process essentially so that you don't need manual intervention for that. So all of these components will get installed as a part of this process. The requirements are mentioned here, of course, again, but you've already gone through the checklist, so you know this. Uh, now, when you start running the code here, we do put a disclaimer up at the top to say, hey, the code is here. You can go and take a look at it as well. So I'm just going to click on that here and we'll open that up as well. The repo here is here. So this is the GitHub repository for the Chocolatey Quick Start scripts. All of the details are contained here. You can see people have contributed to it as well. And um, so we're always we're always improving on this code as well. If you have suggestions, please file an issue. And if you have pull requests of fixing your issue, um, we're happy to accept PRs as well. There is a <clears throat> contributing process that specifically exists um, that will that will be available as well. So so that contribute contribution guideline you do have to follow in order to um, in order to contribute any code to any chocolatey repo. And that generally consists of you know creating a fork, uh, creating a branch on your fork, and then PRing from that branch. Uh, you don't want to be doing stuff directly. And of course, you want to tie your issues and your names for your PRs to those issues um, in an organized fashion so that we have a standard way. There is a contrib contributor guideline uh, that we can point you to. Um, so if you want to contribute to the code, you can you can find it, though. It's pretty easy to find. <clears throat> okay, so a couple of other things I'll mention here real quick. Uh, the Chocolatey for Business C4B uh, feature videos are always available at, at ca0.co slash c4b videos. We normally point folks to this resource now because we don't have as much time that we go through the entire process of, of showing users on uh, in a demo um, all the 
different pieces of Chocolatey for Business. We also include a product webinar as a part of the trial process. So you can take a look at that. So we kind of give you some, some resources, video resources to be able to watch in your own time so that we don't take more of your time on a call. Um, and the, the idea behind that is, you know, when you're free, when you, when your colleagues are free, they can watch that in their own time and be able to get an understanding for some of the advanced features available for you um, using Chocolatey for Business. And the last most important link here, of course, is um, if you're interested in becoming a Chocolatey for Business cover customer, please reach out to us. So sales at chocolatey.io is the best uh, place to contact us. Um, that's usually going to be Tyler who responds to you before anybody else. I'm around, Rob's around, a couple of other uh, folks are around, but uh, Tyler, is that accurate to say? Oh, yeah. Yep. I will definitely be responding to you as quickly as possible. And obviously there's other people uh, that can, but I am I am definitely there for you. So if you have interest in chocolatey, just reach out to sales and you'll get a response hopefully within the next you know hour or two. Are you saying you'll be there for me? Like the friends? Yeah, song? I'll be there. I will be there for you. And, you know, if you need me to write you a song, like I can, I can do that too. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. I, I love it. Your, your dulcet tones will, will, will lull me to sleep. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Now this is becoming an HR issue. Uh, the, uh, I, yeah, I know I've been, I've been monopolizing the talking folks and I, I realize that now when Tyler's spoken up. So is there anything you want to say, Tyler, in your experience here in your couple of months with us, how, how's things gone and anything you want to say about the sales and trial process? Yeah, I mean, I think everything everything is headed in the right direction, and uh, you know, we're just basically compiling more and more information for you guys to make things easier. Uh, the intro calls have been working out very well, and uh, it seems like a lot of people that we talk to are pretty prepared for chocolatey. They already know, you know, what they're looking for, and Adil's been working on all this documentation, and everyone's been helping. And uh, the videos, you check them out, obviously. Adil's basically internet famous because of them. So just make sure you my like condolences. and subscribe. Yeah. 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 My, my condolences to everybody who has to watch those videos. Um, I do my best to try and convey that stuff, but I, so one of the cool things though, Tyler, I would say um, I recognize more so with you being on the calls now is you're noticing when people come to us um, when they, when they go through chocolatey for business um, as an option, kind of one of the cool things that I enjoyed was having you witness how excited people get about some of the features. Oh yeah. Yeah. I brought that up a few times internally. Um, it's, it is, it is pretty cool what chocolatey offers, you know, everyone wants time and that's kind of what chocolatey gives you is just more time and to do all the other important things that are on your list of tasks. Uh, and, and for me, like I actually use open source, uh, chocolatey at home and I've found that it helps me and I'm, I'm sure that Chocolate River Business will help, help most businesses if, if they understand how it works in their system. And uh, yeah, I mean, so far, so good and <laughs> excited for the future. Yeah, for sure. I think one of the coolest things is, um, especially when we have citizens on the call who, who do this on a daily basis and are having to worry about packaging and the other stuff and doing the stuff manually, trying to keep all their patching up to date and everything for, for their software and their environment. And then they see some of the features like package builder and internalizer and how quickly they can go from zero to fully packaged and patched on their endpoints um, using chocolate for business. It really like they're, their eyes light up in, in terms of being able to say, hey, this is all this time and value I can add all those time I'll save and all this value I can add without a lot of time commitment. So I think that's the big take home for folks. I think if you haven't checked it out, check out the videos, uh, you know, check out our website, check out our docs and feel free to reach out to sales. Yeah. Yes. Agree. Rock on, rock on. Well, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad that you're with us, Tyler. And uh, I hope everybody on, on the uh, stream got a chance to meet Tyler and get a little understanding for our sales process and how we're doing stuff now. Again, this is an iterative process, folks. We're here with you on this journey. So if you feel there's stuff that you want to give feedback for that you feel would be different or would be helpful if it was a different way, uh, please feel free to reach out and let us know. We're always happy to listen. We're on the Twitters. We're on, we're on sales of chocolate. Oh, you can always reach out to us. Rob, our CEO, you can reach out to even, he's always open for feedback as well. So, so I think, um, we're, we're 
our ears are open. We're, we're very willing to listen and we're always willing to iterate on our process. A lot of the processes we have defined now, even this new reinvented sales process comes from specifically the fact of the feedback that we got from, from our customers and our, and our, our community. So thank you for all that feedback over time. Um, so I don't see too much activity in the chat here. Perhaps I'm missing some of the stuff, but if there were any questions, we would answer them now. But I think, I think, it's a good idea to maybe give people a little bit of time back in their day and, uh, and, and, and call this stream to a close. Uh, Tyler, is there anything else you wanted to say? Uh, no, I mean, I, uh, I want to thank, you know, thank you for introducing me and I'm excited to be on these Twitch streams, hopefully in the future, uh, mm -hmm. can answer some questions for you guys. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm learning as well. And I, I so far, I, I like everything that chocolatey kind of offers for me and all the people that I've talked to and, excited for for what we have in store and <laughs> yeah thanks tyler yeah thanks folks for all your time uh again same bat time same bat channel um first thursday of every month uh we do do a twitch stream we'll be seeing joining you next month as well so please stay tuned and uh specifically some of the stuff that we're looking to cover in the next few streams is uh, of course, the Chocolatey licensed version three, our licensed extension version three, that's going to include those Intune pieces. Um, stay tuned for those. That will be coming on a future stream uh, or webinar. Um, so if you if you tune into chocolatey.org slash events, that you'll be able to see it there as well if, if that comes up. But definitely we'll cover it in the next stream a little bit as well. And possibly next stream, Tyler doesn't know it yet, but he's probably going to be setting up the Quick Start Guide himself. So we'll show you how easy it is for somebody who doesn't know anything about PowerShell or Chocolatey to set up the Quick Start Guide. So, so hopefully we'll run through that and we'll show how easy it is for some of that stuff to happen. But um, yeah, thank you for your time, folks. Uh, appreciate you joining us and uh, welcome to Tyler. And uh, yeah. we will see you next month. Have a good one. See you guys.